Um, so for, for the people recording, I, I forgot to hit record. We had a wonderful presentation from the Queen's Botanical Garden on the pumpkin smash event um, happening November 11th. Um, and we're going to be moving on now to talking about ways to promote the, the pumpkin composting pledge. Um, before I do that, I'm going to post in the chat, we have some visitors here with us tonight. If you're interested in getting more involved with QSWAB, we have this visitor sign-in sheet. Um, just if you want to keep in touch with us, uh, keep up to date with what we're working on um, and whatnot, that is a form that you can fill out. Um, for everyone else, um, I was looking at um, the participant list. So I'm going to share my screen for a second. And if you are not listed as present, um, let me know and I will mark you present. Um, let's share screen. Okay, let's see. Um, let's, there we go. So share screen here. So this is who we have present if you Let's see if I can make it bigger. Um, if you see your name not here, let me know. Otherwise, you've been marked present. And people who've reached out ahead of time, um, we've marked you as, as excused absence as needed. Um, I'll pause for a second. Let visitors fill out the sign in. And, and folks, let me know if you're not listed as present and you are here. Perfect, okay, I'll leave that up for, for a second so people can keep looking, but basically, yeah, Mac. Hi, uh, can I be heard? Yes, please. Yes, hello, yeah. Uh, no, I just wanted to say that I am the new uh, environmental committee chair at uh, Community Board 4. I know you oh, may great. be aware of Ms. Mahalski. Uh, uh, she's still on the committee, but she decided not to be chair and, um, so yes, I'm representing in her place now. Perfect, perfect. That's so maybe mark... that I should be in the sign-in sheet. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I'll I'll update that and mark you all here. All right, thank you very and much. And welcome, Appreciate welcome. It. We're happy to have you. I look forward. <laughs> great. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put in in the chat in Allison. You may have already done so, but this is um this is the link to to the pumpkin pledge, um. I can pull down the screen so we can see each other now. Um, this is a link to the pumpkin pledge. I think um, you know we all should fill it out and, and share it with our, our networks, um, organizations that we represent, community boards, et cetera. Um, but basically, yeah, as, as Allison noted, the idea is, especially in, in Queens, um, you know, we have their pumpkin smash events around the city. There's also curbside composting in Queens and community drop-off, smart bins, all sorts of ways that people can compost. Um, and so there's really no reason for any pumpkin to go into the trash um, in New York City, but but especially in Queens. Um, and so, you know, we we want to do a push now that, you know, we're we're towards the end of October and people will start to be thinking about this probably around now into early November. Um, you know, we can we can push to the to the Queen Swab Google group. Um, we can use our social media. Um, but I, I wanted to take just a few a few minutes to just brainstorm some ideas of of ways that we can be promoting this. Um, because I do think that this is a really great opportunity to introduce folks who um, maybe haven't composted before. I think this is a really, there's a lot of fun ways to compost a pumpkin. Um, and it's also, you know, something that that people see, um, you know, maybe starting to rot if they keep it a long time. So just ideas that people have for for ways that we can we can spread the word about this pledge. I can maybe start with just a couple ideas that yeah. uh, we are looking at. We we are trying to get a press release out, so 
I don't know if we will, but you know, if it's helpful, I can share the draft in case anybody wants to come up with copy. But you know, I, I'm I'm trying to get it out to all our council members, um, you know, for them to to post in their newsletters. Um, you know, some council members have better newsletters than others, but you know, some post them every week. So uh it would be great to put it there. Um and then I think you said the community boards, any local, um, like if you have block associations, you know, kind of neighborhood associations and that kind of thing. And also schools. Um, <clears throat> we're trying to work with a couple schools to do a collection. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, you know, rather than do a, just a collection at school, it could almost be, um, you know, sending a note home with the kids to their parents saying, let's compost our pumpkin, you know, take, let's, I want to take the pumpkin pledge. So those are kind of three areas, especially you know, people that have contacts in the schools. And um, I'm going to send it to our contact at DOE. I, I don't know if she can, what she can do with it, but we'll see. And, and we do hope to get a, a press release out. If we do, that'll be great. <clears throat> um but as I said, I'm I'm happy to share the copy with anyone that 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 it would help. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be great. And do you know when are you, do you all have a meeting next for for composting or where you'll be talking about some of this? Um, no, I mean okay. our next organics meeting is um, yeah after probably after it's like the second week of November, so I guess. I don't know, you know, it's hard to say. Some people get rid of their pumpkins right away, I guess, especially the ones that are carved might rot. But then if you don't, you know, if it's a whole pumpkin, you know, some people keep them longer for the holidays. Like if you look around, I've thought about like even like leaving flyers next to all the pumpkins I see on some of the, you know, brownstones. They have these beautiful pumpkins displayed on their steps, you know, trying to figure out how to get messages to all the people that are, you know, physically displaying their pumpkins already yeah uh, but yeah we're not meeting let's see yeah no we're not meeting until after i don't have the day oh november 13th yeah okay i mean we can i can follow up with you afterwards if we if folks here are interested in in working with the press release i think that could be i think that's a really good idea because you know i i also saw um, you know, someone in the chat recommended like a New York One local segment thing. Like I think having a press release, um, you know, whether there are ones that are tailored for city council member newsletters or for other things, like I think just having one would be would be good. And then, you know, it, it never hurts to send it um, specifically to folks and, and having that. So, uh, you know, if we can find time to meet, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, folks all the way through Thanksgiving, even having pumpkins, depending on what, whether they're carved or painted or just as they are, um, is something we'll, we can work through November. Um, but, you know, I, th I think if we are able to get a press release for like around Halloween, like I could see a lot of, you know, local news segments putting something in about, you know, this Halloween compost your pumpkins. So. Yeah, I mean, originally I was like envisioning it could have been an all swab press release, but we, you know, I haven't even been able to get it approved through my swab. So it's like, I yeah. just thought it was, as much as I, I wanted to, it just seems like it's just not going to happen. But what I would say is I'll give you, you know, I'll put the press release in the chat or something. I mean, you can feel free to make it, customize it and make it from the queen swab. Right. Uh, you know, right. Whatever you want to do with it. I'm happy. I'm just happy to get the word out. Yeah, that's great. Um, Rev Thorps. I'm just curious, have um has anyone spoken to DSNY in regards to making this a thing, making this uh a bona fide, this is what we're doing. We're composting, we're composting the, the pumpkins and this is where you take them, being that they're doing the whole brown bin, maybe they would get on board if you're letting them know that this is something that we're doing borough wide. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a wide. great, yeah, 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 that's, that's a really great point. Um, I don't know, Allison, if you, has anyone at, from MSWAB talked to yeah. them? 
Well, we've been trying. Um, you know, as you said, you were in the meeting. The commissioner thought it was an well, interesting idea they should look into. Uh, we followed up with Brian from DSNY, um, you know, trying to get brown bins delivered and seeing, you know, just kind of running it by them. And we we just haven't gotten a response, to be honest. And I don't know if it's because they have so many other, you know, they were just testifying at a hearing yesterday. You know, they lost key staff. So I, I don't know. I don't know that they're going to really embrace it this year. They may just make but it a bit. Brown yeah. But if brown bins are already out. Oh, right. In Queens. Yes, you do have They're brown. already out <laughs> in Queens, Staten Island. So can they put the pumpkins or the pumpkin pieces in those brown bins? Absolutely. So then we need to make a, there needs to be a flyer that says compost. Don't forget to put it in your brown bin. Yeah. Where does, where does the pumpkin, where does Mr. Pumpkin, Mrs. Pumpkin go after Halloween? They go to the brown bin. Yes. And now it's a thing. Yeah. I can see I, I don't I don't know if if Matt's been trying to reach out. I can um I can follow up. Yes, the Mr. Is a pumpkin. That's great. Um I, I can see if one, if they have anything planned um for their social media um to be to to be spreading that message because you're you're right, like that is what the brown bins are for and and there's really no reason pumpkins should be going into the the landfill, um, especially in Queens where we have curbside. Um, so so I can try and follow up. I can talk with with Matt and the the other chairs to see if maybe we can do a coordinated push to to see what DSMY's plan is. I mean, some of the smash events are are supported by um, the compost project, which is through DSMY. So. You know, I, I think it's more a matter of like who at DSMY knows uh, about these things, because um, there are parts of DSMY that are that are involved in the existing um, composting of pumpkins. But but I, I I agree that if if DSMY is able to put something out um, as like the formalized the pumpkins go in the brown bins, that that would be very helpful. Yeah, it would. Ryan. Yeah. Also, I was thinking we can always engage uh, the community boards and have them mm -hmm. also put it on their websites. Those that have Facebook, you know, they can put it on there that they're just letting their residents know, hey, you can put your pumpkin in the brown bin so that we don't necessarily have to wait for um, Disney, even yeah. though that's a great idea. Um, and even the pledge, put mm -hmm. that out there on, on the website, if we can engage, you know, the community boards to do that on their website. Yeah, yeah. And also the borough president. I mean, I, I think that, you know, he, his office, you know, sends out stuff like this as well. And so including that in there, I, I think, um, He's also a big fan of Scrappy, so <laughs> we can we can we can make that work. Can I can I interject here? Yeah, totally. Um, I think I think that um, the the thing with the brown bin is that it's great. It's it's serving everybody that it's serving, and it is reducing Department of Sanitation's need to support events like Pumpkin Smash because they can then say, "Oh, we don't need to do these. Put it in your brown bin." which is a great solution. I think that like getting people to realize that their com pumpkins are compostable is a great way to help people learn how to use their brown bin because there's a bunch of people that just don't. Um, this this year and next year are the mm -hmm. last Halloween and pump big pumpkin events that we're going to have that where composting is not mandated in New York City. So this year and next year or the, or the last year is that people get to not compost their pumpkins. We, it's, it's important that we help them learn how to do that because everyone's going to have to do it in 2025. And, and getting more people aware that composting, not just your pumpkins, is, is something that we should be doing. I know that pumpkins are really fun. People get excited about the pumpkin smashes. It's a great opportunity for education. We should also be talking about the rest of the, the, the organic material that needs to be going to, to compost. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a really great point. And I think that, um, you know, I think that this whole time of year, um, there's a lot of ways that we can be pushing composting through like a holiday lens, right? Because we have we have the pumpkin things, we have the Christmas tree pickups, we we have, you know, Thanksgiving time has lots of food. So I think that we can kind of leverage that to be sending out messages about compost. Um, because really every day it's not just a holiday thing that has compost implications, but at least the holidays provide a, a fun framing like this, this um pumpkin pledge. And the pumpkin pledge itself um has information within it. Like when you go through to fill it out, it does ask about like composting generally and where you can compost. So so I think that that's also oh great. And here's the here's the um draft release, um, which we can work with. And, and I mean it doesn't even necessarily need to be like a finalized release. We can also just, you know, reach out to these folks and say, this is something that we've we've put and and you know, you can tailor the message as, as you'd like, but we we would love if you could promote this for, for your people. Um, but yes, yeah. I think connecting to to composting broader is is the big goal. I was just going to add that if we can't get it out like to the press, it'll end up just being a social media campaign. So, you know, that 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 could that could be enough. But I'd like to I'd like to get it out to the press. But, you know, maybe you guys can get it out quicker than we can. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can try. I, I think at the very least, I mean, I think social media is great. I think we'll we'll also be able to do um, borough president and community boards. At least yeah. that's, you know, I can reach out to, to the borough president and then I can send all of this material to our um, community board reps to bring back to their community boards. Um, whether we're able to reach out to city council people, that's another thing we could do. So I, I think that there's a lot of things. I mean, ideally, yes, like we would get this to the press and it can be in, in a bunch of things. Um, but I do I do have um, some confidence that um, we can get it to, to a couple different places, which will hopefully get in front of some people. Um, and I'll also try and, and reach out to DSNY. Uh, I'll talk to to the other chairs before before doing that and just seeing if other people have ideas. Because even if it's their social media people, which like we don't usually interact with a lot, but you know DSNY has been been doing a ton with their social media, and I think this is like they could even just even if we don't provide them the specific language, just saying like, hey, we're doing a push. Could you also? I'm sure that they could come up with some fun way of branding this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and one more thing too i was just going to mention since it's an election year and i think there may be some uh council members in queens that are kind of competitive a lot of them aren't but i think some are i mean it's almost you might want to pitch it to them like to promote composting and then they'll get the attention of you know it's just kind of an angle for them to possibly leverage to for their campaign Maybe they want to do a collection somewhere. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay. Are there are there other other questions, comments, thoughts on this before we move on to the next item? Great. Um, so so I have some folks that that I'll be reaching out to. Um, if you're interested in in getting involved um, with this specifically, um, send me an email. Um, and if there's there's enough of us that it makes sense to do a kind of working group meeting, um, we can do that. Um, otherwise, if it's just a handful, we can just communicate via email. But if you're interested in in getting involved with this, let me know. Um, you know, I, I think it's it is kind of a quick turnaround. I mean, we can continue to promote it during November. Um, but you know, I, I think that it as having as much out there before the end of October is is great. Um, and then a follow up in November might work. So reach out if you're interested. 
Um, great. So our next um, next item on the agenda is committee reports. Um, I'll give a quick update. Um, Mary uh, wasn't able to to attend tonight, so she sent along some some info for for us for the legislative committee, uh, as as well as um, a reminder that they're meeting tomorrow at six. Um, and it's that's the joint Brooklyn and Queens Swab Legislative Committee um, over Zoom, and that's on our calendar, the Zoom link and and whatnot. If you're interested in attending, um, the the big things there's three kind of bullet items that that she sent over. One was that um, the the Brooklyn Swab and the Manhattan Swab provided testimony to the New York State Legislature. Um, related to the better bottle, better bottle bill, um, and I think EPR was the other one. Um, basically, there was a request to for the swabs to to state um, basically what we'd what we'd been working on with those things, um, and so they turned that into some testimony, pulling together previous comments and and testimony to just say this is what the swabs have done related to these two items. Um, so I think they're going to go over that, uh, just how that went, what what the response was, what the hearings were like. Um, the other point um, that she passed along was that the governor signed um, the this uh, Hi. law. Yeah, I was giving you a wave. Hi. <laughs> that requires um, certain ways transported by rail to be covered, um, which that's something that's been in our um both the the state of waste in queens report as well as i think the the swamp um so that's very exciting that's that's something mary's organization cures has also been working on for a very long time um i think that she might be giving a, a presentation at some point on on kind of what that work has looked like um but a very exciting thing um so more to come on that um, the final point is, um, so the legislative committees are going to be building out a, a tracker. Um, I think that this meeting tomorrow is going to be talking about kind of the, the scoping plan for that. So is it just city council? Is it city plus state? Is it city plus federal? What are we actually looking at? But the idea is, is um, you know, individual campaigns, if if you've been involved with, with coalitions, generally have these trackers that list the bill, the bill number, it keeps updates on the sponsors and and whatnot. And like if if our org has reached out or given testimony, basically they're trying to build that out as like an all swab tracker um, to just keep track of some of the things that that are currently being worked on so that anyone in in the swabs are are able to to immediately go and see what legislation we're we're tracking working with um have commented on um so if that's something that you're interested in um and you're still looking for a committee to get involved with that is i think going to to be a big part of what the legislative committee is going to be working on um so with that, I will now turn to um, the Education and Communication Committee. Um, Jenny wasn't able to make it, but Dan, I think, is here. Yeah, I'm going to present. Great. I'm uh, I'm Zoom challenged tonight, so ah. for some reason, nothing is working for me. So I'm going to at least get audio. I think so. I apologize, <laughs> but no I've been I've been listening along maybe on three or four different channels. I don't know how I'm coming in, but um, I apologize. Um, no yes, we did We did meet and we kind of talked about like our committee and where we could be of value. And we came up with a few ideas. And you know, the thing is there's a whole lot of communication everywhere, like on the curbside and on the big things, there's DSNY, there's all the swabs. So we were thinking, could we be of value in promoting QSWAB and maybe with community board outreach? And I know we have community board members here, but we don't know, maybe not all the community boards are representative, or maybe we should be a uh, representative to those community boards where we could either provide something on a monthly basis, either five minutes at the at a meeting or some kind of flyer, um, what we're doing um, and um, and things that are happening, you know, sort of sharing, basically trying to gain some interest 
and some support out into the community with the intention of maybe drawing people in to QSWAB or at least sharing outwardly with what we're doing. So um, we, we kind of have some follow-ups on that. Um, and then we also thought that maybe we could do something like a community district, like a tote board, you know, at the beginning of every meeting that shows our diversion rates and tonnage, which could be a monthly, um, you know, how does each community doing a recycling on tonnage for organics and sort of have that as sort of, um, hey, this is how we did this month. Um, and something Jenny said she could work on a template and we could update it on a monthly basis just to sort of kick things off and pat ourselves on the back or, you know, get ourselves motivated, whatever we need to do. Um, and then we also talked about, you know, I've done some work with International Compost Awareness Week, and they have a very good poster program. It's uh, U.S. and Canada, and they pick one for the year. So we were thinking maybe for outreach, could we do something with some of the schools or maybe on a quarterly basis with a topic where we could have some school supply artwork or posters or something that, um, you know, could we could put on our website and maybe get some kind of community support for some little prizes, gift certificates or something, have uh, a committee here uh, vote and have some prize winners, but basically have a reason for folks to come visit our website, to come and see what's the latest artwork is um, and, and see what the awards could be. But basically we were basically trying to find things like how can we reach out, but also drive interest to, to our QSWAP. Um, going out to the community boards too, uh, we talked about just presenting the deck. So we're not really talking about reinventing, we're kind of talking about outreach, um, which I think falls under the, the title of our committee. So those are just three things. I mean, we really have had a really two meetings and we kind of kicked around and we're kind of struggling where, where we have a value when there's so much out there. Um, so there's plenty of resources, but we want to make the connections or at least help. So I think that's our report for, for this month. Great. Oh, and also I, I want to share too, I couldn't get on, but um, I did, uh, you know, Gil mentioned about the Roosevelt Island pumpkin smash. I did a video, uh, 2021, um, a nice little slideshow video for the pumpkin smash. Um, so I'm happy to, when I am able, I can send that out or a link or something like that if anybody wants to check it out. But it, it really was a fun community event. Um, and I think that's the main thing. The two main points, it was community and it was fun. It really was cute with all the kids and stuff. So I can share that however is appropriate if people have ideas or, or want to take a look at it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Um, and also the the community board presentations and, and outreach is something that, that the borough president's office um, encouraged us to do more of. That's that's one of their goals is is getting us connected more with, with the community board. So I, I think that that's a, in addition to it being a, a great thing for us to do in its own right is also something that the community or that the borough president's office is interested in. Um, yeah, Rip Thorps. Oh, you're muted. Part of the community okay. outreach and I hate to give somebody else extra work because I hate to be given extra work but this is what it comes down to is tabling. You all have to make up a banner, get yourselves a tablecloth. And in the summertime, just like the CBs, well, I know my board, we're in all the parks, as, mo as many parks as possible with our literature, explaining to the community who we are and what we do. And with that, that's exactly what QSWAP has to do every borough. You have to be out there with a table, you have to be out there with a tent. When we do national night out, which is all the precincts, you need to have a table and tent in all the precincts. CB12 has two. So you need to be in the 113. You need to be in the 103. You need to have that information. Uh, my office, I try to keep a thousand leaflets already made and folded and ready to go. So that whenever I have to take a tent and a table, I can go and take this stuff with me. Um, you might as well start doing for back to school, pencils, books, um, 
getting a, a label to put in these books to let people know who you are. Certain little quirky things like DSNY gives out sometimes that little brown bin, but it's more like a toy that sits on a desk. You have to find something that's just eye-catching, something that they can twirl and, and fidget with, but it has to have Q-Swab on it and you have to have your information. And when like um, Roy Wilkins does, um, what is the name of that event, Ms. Scarborough, that we do? It's the big event where all the vendors come out at Roy Wilkins Park, it's like a hundred vendors. I'm thinking the car show, but I'm I'm assuming that that's no, not it. Um, um, it's, the, it's the other uh, one. Juneteenth, we do Juneteenth. What else? Um, Swap can come out for Juneteenth because you'd be surprised how many people like the conversation around mm -hmm. keeping the world clean and composting. And so you're doing them a disservice by not letting them know that you're here and that you're in every single borough because there are a lot of uh, young people, young families that are very, very interested in this. And so you have to table. Every Q swab needs to be tabling everywhere. And I yeah. mean, I know this is the education committee, but you, we can't put the weight of it all on them. So we have to spread the, you know, spread the love and all the other committees need to have some paperwork, something to hand out. Um, mm. You can order bags as well to give out. So back to school in the parks in the summertime. Again, this is the holiday time. So now you have to figure out what you can give out, give out for the holiday. Um, recyclable socks that are made out of recycled um, materials, things like that. That will get the word out about QSWAM or pe and pique people's interest. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, I'm also thinking it would really be an opportunity for all of our QSWAP members to, to volunteer their time and, and to become involved. It's just knowing what the summer schedule looks like for the Borough of Queens and then picking strategically what would be the best um, events to attend and then hopefully getting our membership um, to volunteer so it's not just all on two or three people. Yeah. Could I could I speak to that just for a second? Because um, you know, my I, I work at, at, for big reuse and I table at a lot of events and I'm paid to do that. And yeah. um I don't mind doing it every once in a while for other mm -hmm. organizations and things like that I'm involved with, like the swab. But um the solid waste advisory board is here to talk about issues and advise our elected officials. And I, I wonder how much of the uh, slack we're picking up by volunteering more of our time, like the, coming to this meeting is volunteer time for me. And um, going to my committee meeting is volunteer time for me. And I wonder, you know, why are we planning on going to all these events and tabling? I mean, like there's too, there's, there's too many events for us to be at. Why isn't Department of Sanitation doing more of this work? Uh, I think we should be advising sanitation that we need more educational events in all boroughs because right now they're just focused on uh, Bronx and Manhattan because you're getting the brown bins next in Bronx and Manhattan. So they've stopped coming to Queens. They, they are, are wrapping up working in Brooklyn, the outreach associates, mm -hmm. and um, they're pretty much leaving all the, all the rest of us yeah. hung out to dry. If you didn't get your brown bin by the time they rolled it out, then they don't really, it seems like they don't really care and they're leaving it to volunteers like us to pick up all that slack. And it's really just not fair. I hear you. Let's not put all this work on two or three or four people on this committee, but it shouldn't even be on all of us. You know, there might be 20 or 50 people in this committee. That's still too few. It's Queens is huge. Yeah, that's so why I, I just want to add that it. and be conscious as yeah. we move forward, yeah. planning on educating people like that's not our job our, our job is to educate the elected officials not every person in the borough yeah but it's funny that's funny business in the sense that uh we are trying to grow um the consciousness of folks around the environment and the benefits to composting and just being conscious about climate change and the impact it's having not only on us but the future generation. So um, 
yes, you're right in the sense that um, Disney should be doing more than they're doing. But on our end, when we look at Queens and we look at growing QSWAP, the outreach has to happen. Otherwise, the growth won't happen. If you notice our membership is more on a downward spiral than an upward spiral. Not that it can be on an upward spiral, it can, but the exposure needs to happen. And how you get the exposure is through strategically attending certain events. Certain events where you know it's gonna be folks that's conscious about the environment and maybe some coming with families and stuff, but strategically doing that so that we can grow our organization and with more people, we can get a whole lot more done. And with more people, they, they, when we talk, they will listen more, okay? So it leans into legislation, it leads into policy, it leans into all of that. That's my thought. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that these are these are all great points. I think, you know, uh, I, I I agree that that it, it's not on us to to be educating all of Queens, but I think part of a role is education and growing QSWAB folks. So I think it's a both and thing where DSMY definitely needs to be doing more. Um, and uh, I think we we also um, can be talking to folks um, uh, about things. And and I'll say, you know, I, I think. I've gone to a few um, tabling events, definitely not equitably distributed across Queens and usually by invitation. Um, we've been invited to a handful. Um, I usually only commit to things that I personally am able to go to just so I can like guarantee that someone can be there. Um, but I, I think we, we should build up the infrastructure where um, folks who are interested in doing this, this work um, if we get invited or if people find out about an event that we're able to act on that, I'll also say, um, I mean, I'll say it because I'm the one who, who brought all the materials. We have a pretty pathetic table. Um, and so I think getting something like a tablecloth would, would go a huge, um, distance. So, um, you know, we, right now we have some material from, from us, from the other swabs, um, DSMY has given us a bunch of flyers on on skip the stuff. Um, but other than that, I mean, I think that, you know, we we should do something like having a, a nice tablecloth, having things that we can give away would be would be great. Um, and so, yeah, the BP can can we ask the BP for financial aid for what we need? A couple of thousand. Yeah, yeah I can. Budget. I can. Yeah. <laughs> We need a also, budget. Can I also just talk for a minute about yeah. funding? So I guess it was like three years ago, there was a whole proposal that I put together to try for exactly this. And it was to get a tent, it was to get a tablecloth, it was to get some basic materials so that QSWAB could go out and go to events and do exactly what Reverend Thorbes laid out because that is how you get people's attention. And the big issue was that even if we applied, where would the money go? Because it would have to go to an individual, which most you know organizations, you know foundations, corporations are not going to do. And there's no place to actually you know give the money. So even if the borough president's office was willing to give us a couple of thousand, it needs to go to an entity. And we're not a nonprofit. We should not become a nonprofit. I mean, the only way I could see it working is if we asked the borough president's office to actually create the merchandise for us and pay for it out of his own budget rather than giving us the money. Um, and it's, and for those of you who don't know, I am a professional fundraiser. I, I'm an executive director of the Queens Library Foundation. So I have a lot of experience with fundraising and what all the legal ins and outs are. So it's a great idea, but that is going to be a problem any place we try to get money. However, I do think that we could ask the borough president, He's he must have some budget for community relations, and they could order swag for us. Um, all the other points I've heard, and the other thing I want to say about swag is that we also have to be mindful that we're trying to reduce the solid waste and, and 
nonsense and stuff that gets given out and people throw away. So we have to be very mindful of that. And if we were to get any kind of swag, it would have to really be in keeping in something that people could use um, rather than stuff that people would just throw away. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. Do we one thing that I'm thinking of, do we does anyone know? And if not, I can reach out to to Amy. But when we did our logo redesign, uh, was that volunteering or did we contract someone to do that? That was volunteering. OK, that was all volunteer. There has been no money. I mean, in the time I've been a member of QSwap yeah. since the beginning of 2020, there's never been any kind of money that's been available. The entire report that was done, the design, the writing, the editing was all volunteer effort. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is uh, Benji from yeah. CB. Just a quick question for Susan. Do you mean uh, that in order to be able to get some money, you need a fiscal sponsor? We could have a fiscal sponsor. Mm -hmm. But again, mm -hmm. they would keep a portion of it and um, we would have, th there's a lot of work involved. Mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, a fiscal sponsor is a possibility, but we're talking about very small, like, you know, cause we wouldn't be qualified to get, we wouldn't be qualified to get larger grants. So, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars, which would have an impact. But even then the fiscal sponsor, it, that takes work and other kinds of things to get the fiscal sponsor. So oh, I, I, I don't fully understand exactly what a fiscal sponsor is, but as I was chatting with Pastor Joe Montovani from uh, uh, San Jacobus Church, where Rusty Wilborough Farm, the community farm I uh, started, um, he mentioned that next time I, I get a grant, I can use the church as he's because he's the pastor, so he can make these decisions. Uh, he could be the uh, fiscal sponsor and he wouldn't charge anything. So I could put you in touch with him because that, that might be a way to get that uh, ironed out and simplified. And um, usually there are there are organizations that act as fiscal sponsors for nonprofit organizations. They're usually set up to manage all of the administrative, mm -hmm. the reporting, the financial, fiscal record keeping and everything else. Um, and it's usually the organization's mission, a place like the Fund for the City of New York is mm -hmm. a fiscal sponsor, for example, um, cafeteria culture. Mm -hmm. Cafeteria culture never got its own 501c3. They've always gone to the fund for the city of New York. And it's set up specifically to be a fiscal sponsor. So we mm -hmm. could go to a church. We could go to other places. I don't advise that. Mm -hmm. It's better to go to a place that already serves as a fiscal sponsor, because otherwise there's no assurance that you're, that the re fiscal reporting will happen. It's a whole other side conversation. I just yeah. wanted to bring up that that is one of the central challenges of actually trying to get money is who is going to take the money, where is it going to go, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ryan, I, I just remembered uh, in the very early, um, we did get a grant. Uh, you might want to reach out to Wiley as to how, you know, that was managed and um, handled. But yeah, um, in the very, very early, we did get a grant. Talk to Wiley on that. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think some of this too is, you know, like for a tablecloth, for example, because that would just be a one-time purchase, the borough president's office might, um, you know, especially if they have a budget for for things like that, might be able to just take care of it. You know, obviously, if we have longer term needs, uh, this might become a bigger issue, but I can reach out to them. Yeah, I think that's a good idea is just to put out a, a request to the bar president's office and just see what they're able to do. Um, you know, they've invited us to tabling events, so they know that this is something that we do mm -hmm. and 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 whatnot. And so you know, what What I have now is I have a table and, and two chairs, um, but getting other stuff, I think we can talk to the borough president's office about potentially just, you know, getting the funds to just get stuff to make the table look nice and it would just be a one-time purchase. And, you know, then each individual event, we may need to think about what we're bringing to that event and how we get things to do that. But at least for the initial setting things up to just make it look nice because it, it always just yeah. looks so sad when it's just a empty table yeah yeah you know and Gail I get you in, in regards to the advisory uh board um 
that advisory is what we should be doing. And I think we do that. Um, we do that through the legislation uh, uh, QSWAP committee, um, attending um, hearings, uh, you know, potential meetings with elected officials. So that's in place. Um, maybe there could be more that's being done, but we are a growing organization. But that does not take away from the need to grow QSWAP and to increase exposure. So I think we can do both. I, I know we can do both. I, I don't mean to discourage anyone from tabling. I just want to be a strong advocate as someone who's lost my job and been rehired because the uh, Department of Sanitation decides that education perennially is not important for the compost project to do. Well, and okay. seeing a lot of uh, well-meaning and good-intentioned people do the perform the neoliberal project for our our city and do things that seemingly like solve the problem, but only in a very short term until those volunteers burn out. And then the problem comes back bigger and stronger than ever. So I really just want to, I, I do not want to discourage anyone from tabling and advocating for our cause. But I, as we're doing that, we need to be telling DSNY, you should be paying us to table. You should be paying other people to table. We need education. And you are the people that should be providing the money and resources to do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, great. I'm going to move us on. Um, I think this is this has been a really great discussion um, and, and a lot for us to, to follow up on and, and develop further. I do want to make sure we, we get all the committees. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Bilal now for updates from environmental justice. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ryan. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we, the committee met, our Justice Committee met on October twelfth, uh, seven o'clock to go over a couple of things. Um, one, um, one is uh, kind of coming up, and uh, actually two things is coming up. The uh, mini plastic audit clamp uh, cleanup, uh, in Queens. Um, the Beyond uh, Plastic group uh came to um our September board meeting and they are following up with us. Uh, uh, Ryan, we, you're CC'd on that email with, and so am I in reference to November the 4th, was it November 3rd, 4th or 5th, that weekend, um, Saturday doing a cleanup, uh, I mean, a cleanup, but also an audit, meaning that collecting of certain material that is um, normally drawn out in the streets. Um, they want to know if we can, um, if we're going to commit and work with them to set that up, um, choosing one of the community boards, which is either Forest Hills uh, Community Board or Corona, which would be a uh, community board three. I forgot what Forest Hills is, but I know do know uh, that Forest Hills is very active. So, um, Andrew Hevesy um, just did a cleanup with Senator Aldabo not too long ago there, and I know they're very very proactive there when cleaning up Forest Hills and maintaining um, uh, Forest Hills. I would think that Corona probably would be uh, a different area to focus on, um, but we would have to, you know, get back to um, the um, group there to commit to that. Um, they, again, they're um, supplying us with all the supplies um, that we would need that day, the grabbers and everything. Um, it's just about us showing up and also, helping to get the word out to um, the community board and the officials there to make sure that they have buy-in to participate as well with us on that day. So um, I just would figure to bring it up to this body because it's it's coming, it's right around the corner and we wanna, if we can't do that date, then there are other dates in November, but their fear is that as we get deeper into November, the weather is gonna start getting cold, which next week, um, after the 80 degrees on Saturday, we'll be in the thirties when we wake up in the morning. So the weather is kind of fickle right now. So, and they don't want to do it during the week because the sun is setting earlier and people work during the week. So the weekend is, is probably the best day, best time to do this. So um, if we can follow up um, on that request um, so we can get something scheduled um, for that, that would be great. Um, 
And the other uh, portion that's coming up um, quickly as well for the month of November, it's another chance for a uh, testimony to be uh, submitted in reference to uh, the DAC, the Disadvantaged Communities. Um, and this is on, uh, this is on, um, hold on one second. Ah, here we go. This is on the um, implementation of the uh, of the DAC. Um, the deadline is uh, November the 27th. I have the email in front of me now. Um, this is seeking, they're seeking public comment, which would provide guidance during DUC's permitting process for how and when to consider impacts on disadvantaged communities under the Climate Act, Act section, which is 7.3. Uh, Section seven three requires that the agency that agencies actions averts dis disproportionate burdens on disadvantaged communities and prioritizes reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and coal pollutants in these communities. Uh, the DEP twenty three dash one describes the content of analysis required by the DEC staff per, uh, pursuant to the requirements of Section seven three. Uh, it further describes the procedures the DEC staff will follow when reviewing those analysis for conformance with the requirements of the Climate Act. So this is basically, in a nutshell, uh, the permitting process and how that is um, evaluated uh, so that it is an, um, another chance for public comment to be submitted, but either by the swab together and definitely by the civics, um, the civics and the, and the committee boards. So I will forward this um, information to us, but again, the deadline is November 27th, so we would have to act um, so, sort of quickly to make that deadline um, as well. So we talked about, um, the committee talked about um, the idea of pursuing public comment um, for this uh, for this um, for this public comment period on this issue. Um, the other issue, uh, the other thing that's ongoing right now, actually, I couldn't make that because I'm actually on this meeting, but uh, it has been recorded. The uh, event that's happening with the Queens Alliance and Senator James Sanders Jr. and Senator McClure Anderson on the Environmental Bond Act. Um, Four point two billion dollars is 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 at stake. Um, that will come down to the state and the local governments. Um, in reference to environmental, uh, green jobs, climate resiliency, and infrastructure. So that that meeting right now is ongoing now on Zoom and in person. Uh, they are discussing um, the projects and they're also taking ideas for or, or input in terms of what projects to focus on. Um, that meeting is being recorded um, and I will make sure that we'll have that to everyone um, who could not be there in everyone's email to watch that um, discussion. Um, and that's that's about it. That concludes my report. Um, I will let everyone know when our next Environmental the Justice um, committee meeting is uh, for this uh, coming uh, month. Um, and the focus will be, again, um, these areas that I mentioned, and also that we're always looking for help um, in the environmental justice committee. Um, we are want to grow and want to continue being uh, an advocate for an equitable Queens for all. And with these issues, especially with the DAC, it's going to be an ongoing an ongoing process. So we, we welcome all help and uh, we appreciate again the support of the rest of the swab um, in our on our um, activities so that concludes my report great thank you so much um and yes eastern queens alliance is not with us tonight for for that event and, and they said they'd they'd share the recording with us so um we'll definitely make sure that that folks get access to that so we can we can all benefit from from the info from there um, for the cleanup, thank you for for raising that. I, I have to follow up with um, with that chain. But are are people um, would people be able to do November fourth? I think the the idea is is that it would be scheduled for November fourth with November fifth as a rain date. Um, basically, they're they're organizing one in each borough uh, or several in each borough. Um, the time frame is about two hours and and the goal is to work with with the assembly person from from wherever the cleanup is um so what we time would it be morning or afternoon I'm sorry to interrupt no no problem that's a good question I I don't know Bilal, do you know if they 
I can follow up, but I, I would gather it would be in the morning, but I, I'm not going to mislead you, Benji. Um, I will follow up. We can follow up on that email chain in reference to that. Um, but the other dates that I was told um, in that email chain that is available, and I will read it to everyone now or put it in the chat, but um, there are other dates available, but we just have, they just don't want to, they want to schedule it quickly because the weather is changing. So, and we want to take advantage. Unfortunately, it couldn't be this weekend, 80 degrees on Saturday. I mean, that would probably have been ideal. But uh, unfortunately, um, we, we're looking at November 5th, 4th, and 5th. And then the subsequent weekends after that are also open, but they want to lock down Queens first. So the sooner we can get uh, get them this our answer, uh, the sooner we can get a locked in date and then the other swabs will lock in for the subsequent um, weekends that's available for Thanksgiving. So all the weekends before all the weekends before Thanksgiving are open, basically. Um, so, so yeah, I think, you know, uh, I, I, the fourth would, would work for, for me, um, our other folks, great. We have, we have some other folks where the fourth could work. I think the goal is to do it at least two, like it wasn't in either, or it was which, which That's area were we doing easy. first. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, we'll be organizing another one, but, but I Dana, think getting one. Here and we can see the list of all of the members. Is there anybody missing from the average? Okay. Um, so, so, okay. So not in the morning. And, and I think that no, no problem, Andrea. Um, uh, I think that we can, we can propose that maybe, uh, uh, in afternoon on the 4th, um if that could could work for folks um i'm not seeing anyone say that that date does not work at all and there's a few people who would be able to come so maybe we can just get something on the calendar and then we can see about the second one um with maybe some other folks who aren't able to attend that one um yeah yeah i can i can put out a survey um to just get a sense. And if you are interested in the fourth works, or if you're interested in the fourth doesn't, that's that's maybe a, a bit of information we'd want to know. Um, so I can collect the folks who are interested. I think, you know, there's there are a number of of interests in in doing this. You know, one is just cleanup. Cleanups are are good. Um building connections with the community is is also really great. Um, these areas after 2 p.m. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, uh, the other thing is, is that these are very specific to um, these uh, assembly members are on a on a committee that's reviewing a piece of legislation that um, this coalition is interested in, and so building relationships with those specific assembly members is also of interest. And then a final piece, and, and why I, I want to make sure that this is a time that works for a lot of QSWAB people, um, is, is that this was something that that Wiley suggested we we try and do, especially as a lot of things are virtual, as like an opportunity for, for QSWAB uh, members and, and people who are following us to, to get together in person and in a non-formal you know formal environment um, to get to know each other better. So... Um, I'll send out a, a quick survey, see if see if there's enough folks that November 4th in the afternoon works for. Um, and hopefully we can we can get that scheduled. Um, we're just about at eight. so i'll I'll pause and ask, does anyone have any new business announcements that they want to to present to the swab before we close? Uh, just quickly, yeah. since I'm managing the social media account for Woodside Sunnyside Composting and for uh, Rusty Wheelbarrow Farm, if there is any of these things, like for example, I suppose I should, it would be a good idea of me to share the pumpkin pledge uh, things. If there is any of these type of things that you guys would like me to just relay upon, I mean, it's globally, we probably have like a, around a thousand followers. So that might be something that make a small impact, but you know. 
a sum of small impact can be bigger. So if there is any things of that sort that you guys would like me to share on social media through these two accounts, I, I definitely can help out. That would be really great. Same here. And I had one question, which is, is there anyone here who's on the community board for which Rosedale is part of your community? That's CB13. That's CB13. And is there any, is anyone here from CB13? No, okay. I don't think we have, I think that's the one, let me double check before I say that. I think the that's reason the I one asked, we don't have. The reason I ask is because I was visiting a friend in Rosedale this week and um, she and her husband used to compost and they're not composting now. And I asked why and they said, oh, because they stopped the program. And so I told them that the program hadn't been stopped. And I had mentioned that a while ago, but they said that nobody on their block is putting out, they haven't seen in the neighborhood any brown bins at all. So um, I feel like there's education to be done in that neighborhood, which is why I was asking about community board 13. So. Okay, yeah. thanks. No, that's that's good to know. And and maybe I'll reach out to the um I'll I'll reach out to them again because yeah, that's the one that we don't have a rep for. Um, yeah. they have a very um very active community board though. And they have a very active civic base. Um that's where Eastern Queens Alliance is, so you know how active they are. So their president is Brian Block. Okay. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I'll follow up with them. Other other announcements? Questions? Great. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a motion. Second. Second. Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. I'll follow up. There's there's a ton here, so um, I'll type things up and, and follow up on some of the, the key takeaways. Um, otherwise, keep an eye out for, for events and uh, meeting Zoom links. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.